the U.S. and Germany have agreed to give Ukraine armored vehicles, tanks. And Russia said, that's crossing a red line. And once those vehicles come to Ukraine, that is giving Russia the okay to attack NATO. Are you guys prepared for that? There is a nuclear weapon armed Russian ship off the eastern coast right now, near Washington. Just waiting. What is going to happen to our economy if World War III pops off? What are the food shortages going to be like? Is your work going to stay open? Are you still going to have a job? You just don't know what could happen. And I hope you're preparing for that. Shalom. Call Laimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson, will ye not tremble at my presence? Most High never asks a question that he does not already know the answer to. So he's literally going to cause the earth to tremble. And many are going to tremble with fear. So it's twofold to that, to the answer to that question. So this is going to start with a rebuke of fire. So the Lord is going to lift up a standard of fire when the Elites begin to mandate the CHIP, the MOTB. And we can read about this. Matter of fact, well, go ahead and get it. One moment. Let's go to Revelation 20. <clears throat> Revelation 20. Let's go to verse, <clears throat> verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So this is that final clash between the east and the west, the beast against the bear. Gog and Magog, Russia. Let's go to verse 9. This is where I wanted to go. Verse 9. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So they're going to try to mandate that temptation that's going to come upon all the world. Let's go back. Let's get that. Revelation 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's the CHIP, the MOTB. When they try to push this thing on the Lord's elect, he's going to lift up a standard of fire. Let's go back. <clears throat> Revelation 20, verse... Nine, 
and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false image. Let's read it again. <clears throat> so this devil is the great deceiver, the great slanderer, and false accuser. Rome, which is the revised Roman Empire. So it is a modern day confederation of nations. The European Union, NATO, that's allied with America. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The false prophet, the Roman Catholic Church, the beast, the revised Roman Empire, European Union, and the Ten Horns are the NATO countries, which started out as the original ten through the European Economic Community, or EEC. They received a charter around 1957 and were established somewhere around 1958. That's a separate lesson. Anyway, so the trigger event for the Lord lifting up a standard of fire are the global mandates. See here. <clears throat> Let's keep going. See, the scriptures flow and run together. Jeremiah 51. And this Chinese balloon, by the way, there's no way a Chinese balloon can cross the borders unaware with all the satellite technology America has. That is an absolute joke, and you have to be a buffoon to believe that. Advanced, advanced warning radar and technology would have easily picked that up. Anyway, Jeremiah 51, verse 28 prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, Gog and Magog. That is the a semblance of the reincarnated Medo-Persian Empire with Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Egypt. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51 verse 28. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. That's what's coming. It's going to become a wasteland, a dry place, a desert. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9. <clears throat> so there's a reason the Bible says that the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Because it's going to be at a moment where most of the people least expect him. So he's going to come to the he's going to come to the astonishment of the nations. Let's see if I can find that. <clears throat> Second Ezra thirteen, right here. 
2 Ezra 13, verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. The Most High himself is not going to leave the throne. He's sending his son, the Messiah, whom you ignorantly call Jesus. How do we know this? <clears throat> well, let's go to Isaiah 19. Isaiah 19, verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. See, that great one is Yahweh Shai. His very name means deliverer. This is not talking about ancient Egypt. It's talking about spiritual Sodom and Egypt. How do we know that? Go to Joel 3. Joel 3, verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So this is spiritual Sodom in Egypt, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8. So he's going to come as an astonishment to the nations. And how is 2nd Ezra 13, verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, the elect of Israel. Verse 30, And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, to the astonishment of them that dwell upon the earth. That's your Havashai. See, Let's read again. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass. And the sign shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. So Yahweh Shai spoke about his own return in the future. This is heavy. See, let's go here. I think I got it here. Matthew 24. See, Matthew 24, let's go up to verse 4. And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. See, one people shall fight against another. So Yahweh Shai was speaking about himself. Second Ezra 13, verse 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, 
one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. This Bible is amazing. Matthew 24, verse 5. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, yes, there are natural earthquakes. Also, nuclear missiles are man-made. They create man-made earthquakes. I'm going to show that. So, yes, you have natural earthquakes and also man-made earthquakes by these intercontinental ballistic missiles. Kingdom against kingdom. Gog and Magog against the beast. The EU, NATO, and America. See? The East against the West. That's kingdom against kingdom. And then nation against nation. Ethnos against ethnos or ethnicities. Race riots. Keep it moving. Go to Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiastes 9. Let's go to verse 11. <clears throat> I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Everything is set under the order of the Most High. So he has everything in perfect balance. Rise and fall. Judgments, recompense or rewards, paybacks. See? Based on Time, events, places, eons. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 12. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fish that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So a missile is going to strike. There's going to be a great cataclysmic event. It's going to create an earthquake. And this is going to come after the mandate. And they're going to try to hurry up and speed it up once all hell breaks loose and create safety zones or safe houses, internment facilities to be processed and check or chip in. For man also knoweth not his time as the fish that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So something big is going to go down. They're going to make these mandates. And then the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him. And that standard is fire. <clears throat> Go to Job 9, verse 4. Job 9, verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who have hardened himself against him 
and have prospered. Look what happened to Pharaoh. His heart was hardened, but he perished. So who have resisted the will of the Heavenly Father and lived? Job chapter 9, go up to 1. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so of truth, but how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength who have hardened himself against him and have prospered, which removeth the mountains, and they know not which overturneth them in his anger. So these governments are going to be dissolved. And he literally can shake and move mountains. Or six, which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. He's going to lift up a standard, and the presence of the Lord is going to rock the foundations of the earth. And many are going to be taken in a great number. So Yahweh Shai was speaking about this. See, let's go here. <clears throat> Second Ezra 16, Second Ezra 16, verse 11. Let's go to 10. He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder, at his presence, the earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof, the sea arise up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof, also before the Lord, and before the glory of his power. This is major nuclear devastation, followed by the fiery flames of his rebuke, high energy, concentrated laser beam fire from the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. I had no plan to go here. So fish being taken in a net suddenly represent people. But here, literally the ocean shores are going to be removed out of their place and come to shore. Man-made tsunamis, man-made earthquakes are going to occur simultaneously. And there's going to be a lake of fire effect on the earth. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. Jump down to verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. They're going to come over to America first. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So there's going to be a nuclear holocaust. Holocaust means burnt offering. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth 
shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So Ezra is back, and he saw this in a futuristic, panoramic-type view, where he was in the midst of it, seeing everything happening around, around him. Watch this. We're going to show you that Yahweh Shai spoke about this as well. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginnings of evil. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. I'm going to show Yahweh Shai speaking about this. The beginning of sorrows. Over here. Matthew 24. See? Verse 9. Matthew 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So he sees into the future and is going to come right in the midst of these wars, Armageddon, and while his people are being afflicted. Matthew 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Some are going to become living witnesses or martyrs for this truth and thrown in prison or either or. <clears throat> Let's see if we miss something. Let's go here. <clears throat> we read that the plagues are these fires because of these ICBMs or intercontinental ballistic missiles. So I'm going to show you how Shai was also talking about man made earthquakes. <clears throat> Revelation 11, verse, uh, let's go to 12. So he's going to come and deliver his elect. Revelation 11, verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. A large Fathership. So the elect are being gathered together. Read Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. So this is going to happen right at that onset of this nuclear earthquake or man made earthquake caused by nuclear missiles. See, watch this. Revelation 11. Verse 13, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The Third World War is coming quickly. Let's go back to Yahawashai about these earthquakes. Some of them are man-made by these missiles. Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And some of these 
diseases or pestilence, bio warfare. So if you're not seat hip or mot bead, M O T B, you're going to be deemed a walking biohazard. <clears throat> I'm back on about these earthquakes. See? <coughs> Second Ezra 16, verse 12. The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. And the fish thereof also before the Lord, and before the glory of of his power, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot unto the ends of the world. Intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to create earthquakes, and the elect are going to scarcely be saved. Get ready to close out. See, there's more. <clears throat> right at the end of the sixth trump, going into the seventh trump, the last trump, Revelation 16, verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vow into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. So this is a trigger to the conclusion of Jacob's trouble. There has not been anything comparative or similar to it. Read again. <clears throat> Revelation 16, verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So those that take the sea hip are going to drink from the cup of the Lord's fury. So there is no other day like it. We read that in verse 18. So Jacob's trouble is going to conclude with major devastation and destruction. But the elect are going to be saved out of it. See, let's go here. <clears throat> Well, we'll go ahead and go to uh, Jeremiah. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, and there was none like it. A great day. Lubricate my voice, and I'll read it. See, right here. Jeremiah 30, verse 6. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. So this tribulation is going to be great. They're going to be pushing mandates, the CHIP, the MOTB, incarcerating people in mass number, FEMA camps, basically they're going to be gathering people into these facilities 
to be chipped and in process in. Verse 7, <clears throat> Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So it's going to end in a standard of fire being lifted up. How do we know that? Well, let's go down. The Lord is going to lift up a standard. And we also read that in Revelation chapter 20. <clears throat> Say Jeremiah 30, verse 23. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. These so-called UFOs are going to be emitting high-energy, concentrated laser beam fire. See? So he's going to lift up a standard of fire, and the elect are going to be taken up, changed, and then descend down to take the nations head on with Yehoshai leading the charge. See, more on that day, and there is none like it. Micah 5, verse 15. And I will execute vengeance in my anger. Micah 5, verse 15. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. I love this scripture. So when they create the tribulation and the pit for Jake to fall in, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is going to return their reward upon their own head. <clears throat> so he's going to return their recompense or payback upon their own head. Slavery. They're trying to enslave everybody, right? So they're going to get what they try to set up for Jake. I'm going to read this again. I love this scripture. Micah 5 and 15. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. Beautiful. The earth is going, earth is going to shake and tremble at the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> at the presence of the Lord. I think that's trying to remember where it's at. Haggai two, verse six. For well, thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The house of David is being resurrected. Lord's temple. So it is the vengeance of the Lord's temple. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakwak Kadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala. And the Bible. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom.